No other animator for Thomas had a journey quite like Greg Tiernan. From having to oversee all of the animation for four seasons and four specials of Thomas, to having to translate Thomas's model aesthetic into CGI, to moving away from kiddie animation and working on more adult properties, only for that to blow up in his face, literally nobody else had an experience with Thomas quite like Greg Tiernan. At a time when Thomas was in his worst era, Greg Tiernan's animation was often the highlight of a season or special. But despite the amount of praise the CGI series has been receiving in recent years, Greg Tiernan is a name that we never see pop up. It's always Sharon Miller this. Andrew Brenner that, or Michael White the other, but never Greg Tiernan. Why is that? Why is it that the Andrew Brenner crew always get talked about when 80-90% to of the CGI assets in the show were from Nitrogen Studios? Is it because the Nitrogen era episodes aren't as loved as much by fans? Is it because of Greg Tiernan's controversy about terrible working conditions on Sausage Party? Or is it something else entirely? Well, that's what we're going to go through today. This is part of a new series on my channel called Crew Review. It was originally called Writer Review, but I felt that name was little restrictive, hence the change. I find the story of Greg Tiernan incredibly fascinating. It's such a bizarre and weird story in that he's such an influential part of the Thomas history, being the guy responsible for 90% of the show's CGI, only to abandon Thomas for Sausage Party, and then to have all these allegations come out about terrible working conditions under him. It's just such a bizarre story, and I find it crazy how nobody in the Thomas fandom ever seems to talk about it. So today, I'm gonna talk about it. Also, quick warning, I will be showing some footage from the movie Sausage Party, so viewer discretion is advised, but with all that out of the way, let's begin. Greg Tiernan was born in Dublin, Ireland, and you can definitely tell that by the accent that the man has. It is a very freeing experience to be able to just animate something that you don't have boundaries on. Ah yeah, but I'm Greg Tiernan, yeah? I did the animation for CGI Thomas, yeah? That's right, believe it or not, me and Greg are both from Ireland. Huh, now that I think about it, Michael White is also from Ireland. Hmm. Greg got his start in the animation industry working on Don Bluth films, of all things. Because of some tax exemptions in Ireland at the time, Don Bluth actually had an animation studio in Dublin, Ireland, where Greg Tiernan got a job there working on such famous films as An American Tale, The Land Before Time, and All Dogs Go to Heaven. He worked on animation in Ireland, the UK, Germany, America, hell, he even worked on the movie Cool World of all things. <laughs> Not gonna lie, Greg has a pretty impressive portfolio. He worked on some other animated stuff in America too, before moving to Vancouver in Canada, where he and his wife, Nicole Stinn, would later set up Nitrogen Studios in 2003. Greg and Nicole were later approached by Hit Entertainment in 2007, about making a CGI test pilot for Thomas, using Thomas and the Stinky Cheese as a basis for the test pilot. Greg was actually quite familiar with Thomas and the Railway series before even joining the show, having seen some of the classic episodes when he was younger, and even reading some of the Railway series books too. Greg was actually quite familiar with Thomas and the Railway series before even joining the show, but when he got the job at Hit Entertainment, he went back and re-watched the entire series of Thomas. I'm not even joking. From Thomas and Gordon all the way to series 11, he re-watched the entire series series in preparation for his work on CGI Thomas. Now that is a level of dedication. Not only that, but he also got a copy of the Thomas the Tank Engine Man, a copy of the iOS book, and he even started reading real railway books and even signal guides too. That is dedication. Hence why there are a lot of little easter eggs like the Reverend's Island of Sodor map in Misty Island. It's so clear to me that this man is very clearly dedicated to CGI Thomas. And that's pretty much the history of how Greg and Nicole got involved in Thomas. As I said, Greg and Nicole were asked to translate Thomas from model series into CGI, which is a pretty unenviable task when you think about it. Like, because one of the most famous parts of Thomas was the fact that it was real models on a real model set. And when it was first announced that it was first switching to CGI, I think everyone in the world pretty much hated the idea. Like, if you asked the average person what their thoughts were on Thomas, they would usually say, yeah, I love the old stuff but hate the new stuff. Most people at the time did not like the idea of Thomas, this classically modeled show, switching to CGI. So so, from the beginning, it was really an uphill battle for Greg Tiernan. Now, what's interesting about the Thomas and the Stinky Cheese animation pilot was that it was a lot closer in the style to the original model series. The way the models looked, the way the workers actually have paint lines on them instead of actual clothing. This sort of approach they were going for in the Thomas pilot was less like CGI Thomas and more like model series Thomas, but done with the CGI assets, if that makes sense. I know a lot of fans wish the CGI series had gone in this route of having all the CGI characters be one-on-one -on -one scale replicas of everything in the model series. Maybe that would have helped connect them better, but I'm personally really happy that the CGI series didn't go this route. It just feels kind of weird, and I much prefer the CGI Thomas being its own thing in my opinion. 
You can definitely see the spill over to the animation that Greg did for Series 12, where it's trying to replicate the model series look rather than doing its own thing, like how Gordon still has lines in his forehead, for example. But even though Thomas was transitioning to CGI, there was still very clearly an effort made by both teams to make the transition as smooth as possible. Even for filming on the first week of Series 12, Greg Tiernan actually went down to the set of Shepperton Studios to help the crew set up for CGI markers. The Series 12 animation is definitely the most primitive stuff Greg did in the Thomas series, but I I really do think that Greg Tiernan and his team knocked it out of the park when it came to Hero the Rails. I know looking at the animation now, in 2024, it's easy to look back and think that it's bad, but for the time, this was actually incredibly impressive animation. Like, just look at some of these shots, like, they're so impressive. I honestly think some of the shots still hold up to this day, especially some of the ones that are in the morning or night scenes, they look lovely. Keep in mind, this was around the same time that Hit Entertainment was making all of their model properties take the switch to CGI, such as Bob the Builder, Fireman Sam, and yes, Thomas the Tank Engine. And when you look at some of those other shows, like their animation compared to Thomas, it's completely night and day. Like Bob the Builder's animation looks nothing like its model series. Fireman Sam's animation is like this nightmare fuel that I can't escape from compared to the amazing model series work that series had. But when you compare how bad their animation was to how good Thomas's was, I think Greg Tiernan did a wonderful job of translating Thomas's world into CGI. Now while Nitrogen pretty much did its own thing when it came to the CGI era of Thomas, there is still a clear attempt to keep the models and the look of Thomas close to the original as possible, while it's not becoming a clone of that era, if that makes sense. So much care and thought was clearly put into the animation. It's just such a shame that it was all in service of this terrible era. It really felt like the CGI series had come into its own, but at the same time, it still felt felt like the show had enough respect for the model series and the model era of Thomas. Unlike Fireman Sam or Bob the Builder, where it just feels like a completely disjointed show from the model series and the CGI era, I think CGI Thomas did a really good balance act of doing its own thing while paying homage to the model series. Like how all the framing of the cameras is done very similar to how it would have been done in the model series. You can tell there is a lot of intentional restriction when it comes to Greg Tiernan and his camera work. They will occasionally do these impressive shots that just wouldn't have been possible in in the model series, like having the camera positioned in places it wouldn't normally have been, but for the most part, I think Greg Tiernan and his team did a remarkable job of transitioning these characters into the CGI world. I do have a few criticisms, like I've never been a big fan of the faces they gave some of the CGI characters, I think a lot of the green grass country sets can get stale, and I'm not a big fan of how all the engines look like cloud factories. <laughs> like seriously, why is there so much smoke and steam coming out of them? But for the most part, I think Greg did a remarkable job of translating Thomas into the CGI world. Like there are so many great scenes in the movie, like this first shot of Thomas for example, where Thomas is at the water tower and then Spencer zooms by, it's so impressive, the way you have the drive interacting with the scene and the way he even adjusts his cap, it just wouldn't have been possible in the model series to do that. The way the water tower pipe gets affected by Spencer as it goes past, the way Emily's trucks crash, the way Spencer leaves leaves as he goes by. This whole opening sequence is the perfect example of why the switch to CGI was such a good idea, showcasing all the possibilities with CGI that wouldn't have been possible in the model series. Just even seeing Thomas speak for the first time was so revolutionary. Fizzling fireboxes! What was that? I distinctly remember watching it for the first time and being impressed that his mouth was finally moving. <laughs> I always felt like Hero of the Rails had just this little extra bit of attention to detail. Like, it really felt like the crew behind it were passionate about what they were doing. Every little animation thing is so impressive. I think Greg did a fantastic job with CGI Thomas. It's just a shame that everything that came after this movie feels so boring. For all the goodwill that Hero of the Rails built up, it really feels like a lot of it plateaued afterwards. With that movie, they really had proven that Thomas could be in CGI, but after that movie, everything else felt like a chore. There was the odd episode which had impressive animation, like the early bird is a good example, but for the most part, all the CGI episodes just felt kind of samey. I just wish some of that Hero of the Rails magic was used more often in some of these episodes. It's weird, for a time period where all the episodes were bad, ironically enough, the best part of the movies or the specials 
was usually the animation. Like I think the best example of a movie that's really bad but has great animation is Misty Island Rescue, where the characters and the story are completely nonsensical and yet the animation still always goes above and beyond. Like just remove yourself from the awful characters and the terrible rhyming dialogue for a minute and just look at the animation on its own merits and you realise that it's actually pretty amazing stuff. In fact this is even a sentiment shared by Greg Tiernan where he himself is not even a big fan of the rhyming. <laughs> Considering this animation was made all the way back in 2010 and still somewhat holds up today, I think that's incredibly impressive. It's weird, it's almost like the worst idea possible but yet they're just being executed in the best possible ways. Like just look at the Shake Shake Bridge for example, a stupid concept for sure, but just look at how well they animated the thing. All the little components, the way it all swivels, like the CGI here is so impressive. I even like how the bridge breaks when Ferdinand goes over it, it's so good. The animation that Nightstrom did for Misty Island Rescue is so bold and daring, trying new things like water effects or the mist. Nightstrom did such a good job at making Misty Island feel atmospheric and different and mysterious from Sodor. The animation is honestly the best part of the movie. A lot of fans complain and wish that Nightstrom had done more dynamic shots with the camera, but you know what? I really respect that Greg Tiernan had the restraint to not do that. Because yeah, they could have totally done some crazy wacky angles from every single episode, but I honestly like that they didn't do that. They did occasionally do some super impressive shots, but for the most part the camera usually stayed locked down and static, like it was in the classic series or the model era. A lot of people call the CGI series Greg did lazy, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Greg even talked about how the CGI was almost like a tool, and how it's still very much a craftsmanship that goes on into every single model and asset that he creates. Like, it's not lazy to film something in a particular way, it shows restraint on the part of the animator. So many cool character designs and bases came from Greg Tiernan himself, like Hit would come to him with an idea and he would generate the idea for that basis. It's so clear to me that Greg Tiernan very clearly cares about keeping Thomas realistic as possible. Like people need to remind themselves that he is not a writer for a lot of these episodes. It was Hit and the producers who wanted these episodes about bubble liquid and clowns, not Greg. And it's such a shame that Greg wasn't a writer on Thomas because he very clearly had a love for the source material, such as his favourite railway series books being Very Old Engines and Duke the Lost Engine. And he even talked about wanting to adapt Duck and the Diesel Engine as CGI stories for example. Like for all the credit that Andrew Brenner and others get, it's such a shame that this guy who clearly cares about Thomas just as much doesn't seem to get the same recognition just because he worked in the wrong era. Were those episodes unrealistic? Yes, but it was Greg who was the one who was always trying to make sure that there was a balance kept of realism. Now, Day of the Diesels probably has the least impressive animation out of the four Nitrogen era specials. Like, Greg Tiernan's other three movies felt so atmospheric. Hero of the Rails had lovely morning shots and all those atmospheric scenes with Hero. Misty Island Rescue did a fantastic job of making the atmosphere of Misty Island feel eerie and unique from Sodor, while Blue Mountain Mystery felt very industrial and having a great sense of tone with Luke's backstory, such as him being in the dark here at the Steamworks, or the way the storm comes in, you know? While Day of the Diesels just feels really really bland compared to those other specials. It just feels like an extended episode, you know? But I don't necessarily think it was Greg's fault that the movie felt so drab, because apparently the movie was meant to be much more atmospheric, but Hit wanted a change to be less dark and more toned down for children. Like this scene here where Percy meets Diesel 10 for the first time was meant to be set at night, but that was later set to day, and Diesel 10 was meant to have a much more menacing voice, but again that was also changed. Like you can kind of tell too with some of the scenes in the movie, like how this scene with the barn shed is on fire is very intense and is honestly one of the best scenes in the movie, or the scene where Kevin meets Percy for the first time. I just wish more scenes in the movie were like that, you know? Or, or the scenes with Diesel 10 and the Diesel's charge you can definitely taste some of the earlier versions of the movie in some of the scenes in this movie, like Fire Scene or the Kevin scene. It's such a shame that Day of the Diesels was toned down by Hit because I can totally picture the original movie that Nitrogen was going for. Like, it starts off all bright and cheery and then suddenly it transitions into this dark fire scene with the barn on fire. Hell, maybe that scene where Percy's at the crossing actually took place at dusk. I mean, that would make sense since the next scene is at night time, so... Also, that scene with Percy meeting Diesel 10 for the first time? That would 
have been so cool to see that at night time. Why didn't they do that? I mean, I know why, because they originally did it that way and then he'd asked for them to tone it down, but it would have really helped this movie stand out more, you know? It would have been known as like the Dark Thomas movie, you know, because it would have felt very grimy and grubby. It's such a shame that Hit asked them to tone it down, because I got a feeling that Greg Tiernan definitely put a lot of love into the darker atmosphere of the movie, only for it to kind of be squandered in the final product, you know? As it stands, I think it's the worst Nitrogen era movie. Yes, Misty Island is bad, but at least that movie had some pretty animation and very atmospheric scenes. There's just so many nothing scenes in Day of the Diesels. Day of the Diesels is just pure boredom. In my opinion, boring is worse than bad. But the best example of Greg Tiernan and Nitrogen Studios' dedication to CGI Thomas has to be Blue Mountain Mystery, where they went all the way to Wales to look at Welsh railways, such as the Talcan Railway, just to get accurate measurements and sizes of the engines. The amount of dedication Nitrogen had when it came to Scarlowy engines versus Ark Duncan is so obvious. There was so many little details in this movie, even super fans wouldn't notice, like how Owen is based on the Dinneric Incline, or the amazing narrow gauge trucks, or rolling Stock. There are so many little easter eggs and examples of little narrow gauge rolling stock throughout the movie, half of which I don't even know the names to. Like Greg Tiernan didn't have to go the extra mile to do this. He didn't have to go to Wales. He didn't have to get all these specific wagons. He could have very easily just copy and pasted a bunch of random trucks and called it a day, but no, he went the extra mile for this movie. So many cool assets and designs were used throughout the film. Hell, there's even this super obscure easter egg right here. Did you catch it? Let's see it again. Did you catch it that time? So this engine the camera is panning across in the foreground is known as the Marklin engine. Back in series 1, the crew actually used the Marklin engine on the set for a goods train being pulled in the background. And Greg Tiernan somehow knew about this super obscure detail, then made a CGI version of the Marklin engine just in the scene here where Thomas comes into the yard and as the camera passes. Like, it's such a cool detail that only a tiny fraction of Thomas fans would even notice. They could have easily used some other scrap, but no, Greg went that extra mile and I really appreciate that. Honestly, Blue Mountain Mysteries animation feels like such a love letter to real Welsh railways. Like how Luke is based on Peter Pan, or how authentic the Scarlory railway engines are, or even just the real life railway practices that the movie has, such as a rock crusher, or the incline, or the aerial winch system, which fun fact is known as a Blondin, hence the name Blondin Bridge, or even the rust and sea effects on Victor, which looks so good, or the crashes in the movie and the dust effects, all of it looks so effective. Another thing I really like about Blue Mountain Mystery is how faithfully they adapted the flashback sequences. Like, for example, uh, Henry when he's inside the tunnel, yes, they do have him in the wrong shape, I'll give you that, but when they were matching up the footage, they actually lowered the bridge like it was in Series 1, which is, like, really cool, and, and it's also something that The Adventure Begins didn't do. And then when they recreated Thomas in the Mine, they faithfully adapted the whole set and the way that he falls down. Again, obviously, Thomas's driver and fireman weren't inside the cab at the time, but like it's just really faithful to how it looked in the original model series, you know? So much passion and attention to detail was put into animation. And I will never understand why some fans call it lazy. And yeah, that's kind of it for Greg Tiernan's tenure with Thomas. It started out really strong with Hero of the Rails, it kind of dipped in the middle, but then it ended really well with Blue Mountain Mystery. In my opinion, the perfect way to end his career with Thomas. Speaking of ending his career... So, uh, do you remember that weird movie, Sausage Party? You know, that movie that had that Pixar tier level animation, but was an adult animated movie with plenty of swearing, many, many cultural stereotypes, and an overall sense of juvenile humor? Well, what if I told you that the people behind the animation for the early years of Thomas Tank Engine were behind that movie? So after working on Thomas, Greg Tiernan stepped away from the show. We'd already done four Thomas movies. Um, it was a thousand minutes. A thousand minutes of animation over 120 TV shows and we had a blast while we were doing it but so you know what we've we love Thomas but we, we, we've been there done that and I've got a lot of pent up emotion over <laughs> the Thomas years and so I gotta yeah. get it out somehow after all the years of working on kitty animation Greg was ready to try some more adult animation it is a very freeing experience to be able to just animate something that you don't have boundaries on along with co-director Conan Vernon and Seth Rogen of all people <laughs> they came up with the idea of food coming to life and how crazy 
would be. It's just so crazy to me, you know, seeing Greg Tiernan, the Thomas director, being inside the same room as Seth Rogen. It's just so mad to me. But anyway, the basic idea for Sausage Party was to make an R-rated movie, but for adults. As Greg Tiernan said, there had never really been anything quite like it before. Because nobody has ever really done this before, ever done an R-rated animated movie. In a lot of ways, I can see where Greg is coming from here. Like, I totally get his philosophy of trying to make more adult animation for a mainstream market. But nothing about this movie, to me anyway, feels particularly adult. Yes, there's a lot of sexual references and phallic imagery and jokes for adults, but nothing about this movie feels particularly mature to me. The movie just feels like a stoner comedy. Nothing about the movie feels particularly mature or adult to me. Like, the whole script just feels like it was written by a 13-year-old who had just learned what swears were for the first time, you know? Like, there's a smart way to do adult humor, like The Simpsons, Futurama, Family Guy, South Park, and A Town Called Panic are all great examples of having kiddie-like stuff, but actually being quite adult. Nothing about this movie to me feels adult, other than all of the profanity, or shock humor, or cursing, or sex puns. Claiming this is adult? Eh, nah, this isn't adult, this is just some juvenile movie. Like, I get what the movie is going for, an allegory for God, and the religious belief systems that the food have, but for me personally, it's just not my cup of tea. No pun intended. <laughs> After the release of Sausage Party, it was reported on Cartoon Brew about the animators of Sausage Party were forced to work long hours and were not being paid for their overtime. One of the sources described Greg having a disturbing behavior and an abusive management style. So basically what happened was Greg Tiernan forced the animators to work overtime and if they didn't do their overtime, that they weren't getting paid for by the way, they would either lose their jobs or worse get blacklisted from the industry. Of the 80 animators that worked on Food Fight, 36 of them went uncredited because of this blacklisting. It's such a weird twist. Greg Tiernan, this guy who was behind Thomas and was very clearly passionate about everything he did and, you know, always put in 110%, just to hear that was so bizarre to me. It was like a twist Disney villain or something. <laughs> for all the promises and hope that Greg Tiernan had for revolutionizing animation in the industry, he ironically made a complete shit show of an animation feature. And ironically enough, his controversy is the thing that kind of made him famous. And after that, you'd think that Greg Tiernan and Conan's careers would be over, but apparently not. The pair would later go on to work on The Addams Family and then The Addams Family 2, while Sausage Party would later gain a sequel series called Sausage Party Foodtopia, which is apparently meant to be coming out in 2024, aka this year. Like, Seth Rogen is returning, but it's unclear if Greg Tiernan is coming back, so yeah, pretty bizarre. I find the story of Greg Tiernan to be endlessly fascinating, in that he really clearly cared about making the series of Thomas better, going as far to rewatch the entire model series, and getting the Thomas Tank Engine Man book, and the iOS book, or even going to Shepperton Studios to help the crew there, or going to Wales to make sure that the Scarloy railway engines were as accurate to the Welsh railways as it could be, even throwing easter eggs that only hardcore fans would spot. In terms of Thomas, I think he did a fantastic job, but then you see him go and make Sausage Party, and then realise what a shit show of production that was, and then him not paying the animators and threatening to blacklist them, it really makes you question whether we really know who Greg Tiernan is at all. Part of me wonders if Greg was just way too over in on his head when it came to Sausage Party, and perhaps that's why he acted the way he did during the movie's production. Now to be clear, I'm not making excuses for Greg here, like what he did was wrong, but I'm just trying to make you all understand the situation a little better. We may never know what really happened behind the scenes of that movie, and I think that's what makes Greg Tiernan such a mysterious man to me. Despite being the man behind the CGI assets which was used throughout most of the show, and really going above and beyond when it came to his work in Thomas, we still don't properly know anything about the man. He's very mysterious in that regard. I just find the whole story of Greg Tiernan endlessly fascinating. I'd love to hear what your comments are down below, and what you make of Greg Tiernan, as I personally am constantly fascinated by his whole story. On that note, I think it's time to end. Let me know your thoughts on Greg Tiernan down below, and I'll Catch you all in the next one. Slano Do I have to say ah yeah? Yeah, sure, why not? Ah yeah, but I'm Greg Tiernan and I did the animation for CGI Thomas. Ah yeah. Ah yeah, but I'm Greg Tiernan, yeah? We did the animation for CGI Thomas. I did the animation for CGI Thomas, try not. Ah yeah, but I'm Greg Tiernan. I did the animation for C no. Animation. No, you can't do it. No, no, just forget about the first part. I did the animation for CGI Thomas, try that.
I did the animation for CGI Thomas. Animation. Animation. I did the a <laughs> animation. I did the animation. I did the animate. No, I can't do it, man. No, no, you can, you can. I did the animation. Animation. Yeah, I did the animation. I did the animation. I did the animation. I can't, yeah, I can't do animation. it. Animation. An animation. Animation. Now say it in Dublin accent. Animation. Animation. An <laughs> animation. There you go. I did the animation. I did the an yeah, I did the animation. I did the animation for CGI Dublin. No. <laughs> I did the animation for CGI Thomas. I did the animation for CGI Thomas. I did the animation for CGI Thomas. <laughs> oh god. I did the animation for C no. Animation. Animation. I did the animation. Try to I did the animation. I did the animation. An animation. I did the animation. An animation. An animation. 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 I did the animation. I did the animation. Animation. You're, what are you saying? You're saying animation. Animation. An animation. <sighs> Just try the first one. Uh, yeah, I'm Greg Tern and yeah. I did the animation. No. Animation. Animation. Yeah. I did the animation. Just try I the first one. I did the an animation. Animation. I did the animation. 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 Yeah. I did the animation, yeah. I did the animation. I did the I did the animate animation. There you go. I did the animation for CGI Thomas, yeah? Ah yeah, but I'm Greg Tiernan, yeah? I did the animation for CGI Thomas, yeah?